Next, another keynote by Radha Basu. She's the CEO of iMerit. iMerit is the human in the loop, right? So they have real people working on, on, on AI, on big data. And uh, Radha is, is a very experienced uh, C, uh, senior level manager with 20 years of experience in HP, I believe, working in Silicon Valley and, and uh, other continents, other countries around the world, right? So you can tell a bit about yourself and what your company does. Thank, Thank you. you. So it's just me back again. I know you guys saw me just a few minutes ago and I didn't realize it was back to back. So I'm um, CEO of iMerit and we founded this company, uh, we call it Human Empowered Computing, precisely to develop a workforce that can be the best at working with AI technologies. And at the time we founded it about six years ago, we didn't really know what those technologies would be. We knew there was some computer vision and stuff like that. And what would it involve to develop a workforce like this? So I'm going to talk about the future of AI from a workforce point of view. So of course, you all know that there's massive amounts of on-target data. And this is the way for, we believe that the workforce we're creating is what will help to take AI from lab to production. AI is in many, many different areas. It's in proof of concept, it's in pilots. Some, in some areas, it's actually started to go from the lab to production. But you need massive workforces who can do what? Remember the people who talked this morning? Microsoft talked about solutions, AI stuff that you can just get, customizing for your business, and developing custom solutions for your business. Those last two, customizing and custom solutions, require a workforce trained in AI, absolutely honed to be able to do the best in AI. Robin from Crowdflower, who's a very good partner of ours, talked about the three steps. AI equals trained data, machine learning, plus humans in the loop. And it's that trained data and humans in the loop are the two pieces that we bring together. So how do you bring AI to li a life? So there's a lot of technologies, and I will not talk about the technologies. For us, it's being agnostic about the platform we work on. So clients could actually have their, plat their own platforms in-house to the company. They could be working with platforms that are Google or Crowdflower or Amazon's technology or TensorFlow, whatever it might be. And the third one is there are a small subset of clients who actually want to use our knowledge and our insight to be able to, uh, to deliver their, uh, their needs. Very complex and multidimensional. We started off by saying, okay, there is something like a bounding box. So there's like a, a segment, uh, an annotation of Irish. Now when we look at some images, and recently we worked on a project for a client, or we continue to do that, where an image had, we had to annotate 2,300 objects on an, one image. So it becomes very complex and multidimensional. And a lot of time is being spent, as you know, and it's, uh, this is, I think it's 72% of data science uh, time is spent on building training data. You want them to be looking at what are the results of it, how are the algorithms working, et cetera. So I talked about this before, and I will just kind of repeat this, is you need a very scalable workforce. So sometimes I was talking to a potential client today who said, I get these data in bursts. I'm collecting data from hospitals of different kinds of images, and I could get 10,000 images a month. In the next month, I might only get 2,000 images. And so you need a very scalable, you could have, sometimes we work in a month with a million pieces of data, and sometimes we may work in a month with 200,000 pieces of data. So it's a very on-demand, scalable, very agile workforce, because what you're working on, the instructions, how you deliver it, is a very dynamic model. And I would say that for us, from our experience, and I'll talk a little bit about the experience we have, 
the workforce has to be custom skilled or customer customized skilled because someone who's looking at cancer cell categorization versus images for autonomous cars, not a good topic today, I understand that, um, or looking at weather analytics, satellite imagery or imagery from drones, or looking at what is the amount of oil in a big oil uh, container so you can determine whether the prices of oil should be going down or going up, and that's uh, geospatial based imagery. The applications of this are quite different. While the services themselves may be in these areas, so in computer vision, you have polygon annotation, bounding boxes, dense pixel segmentation, or you're doing natural language processing that could be like a hello Roku and you know you're responding to what Roku needs or you could be doing you know all of the different hellos and stuff you go or dear Alexa or whatever what that data that Alexa is responding to is very different so natural language processing if you're doing it for e-commerce retail or you're doing it for a fintech industry for analysts is very different and that's the experience that I'm talking about in a workforce that is able to take the AI technologies and apply it to an industry. Content services, moderation, categorization, product categories, now what's happening with simple things that were um, basically back office functions like receipt transcription. Now our receipt transcription with bounding box. So those two things are coming together and we do a lot of this kind of work where two different facets of AI are coming together and of course you've heard of all of the customer support pieces. So when you look about experience, it's not just about volumes. We could, we've done more than, I think now it's closer to 19, 20 million image annotations and some of those images, as I said, could have 102 to 2,500 objects. Lot of text annotations, whether it's NLP, named entity recognition, salience, relevance, and being able to train AI. That's, that's the part. But let me go to the next step because training AI gets into the machine learning. But that might only predictably give you 65, 60, depending upon the type of the project, 60, 65% confidence and predictability and accuracy. So then you have the humans in the loop who then look at that data of the machine learning and this is where having a workforce that has previously worked on it and actually has the intelligence around what they saw earlier Sometimes we bring back the data and they will actually go through another cycle of either annotation or NLP and quality checking so that it increases the predictability and that's where the client insight comes in. And so it is, I was talking about this earlier, the process of taking AI to production is very, very important. So it starts with, we will never do a project that does not have a proof of concept because it is from unpacking that data in the POC that we really figure out what's the custom skilling, what's the tool or the technology platform needed, and how do we structure the workforce and the workflow and the data so you can get the best results. So this thing of getting it to from 65 to 80% to 90% accuracy is a very important and iterative part of this. So when we look at the new AI services workforce, and I joked about this earlier, those of you who were in the room, the average age for our workforce of 1,300 people, and we are adding about 250 a quarter, 250 to 300 people a quarter. So AI does create jobs. It has to create jobs if you're going to take this AI technology and take it to production and deploy it in your companies. So our workforce is 24.6, and you know what the 0.6 is. That's because of me. And it's born digital. It's born mobile. We have 55%, actually a little bit higher than that, women. 
And it's not because of diversity, it's because of bringing out, we assess every young person as to what kind of work can they do the best. Is it in being able to look at different patterns and recognize them, in being able to do transcription, in being able to do pixel segmentation? And based on that, based on our experiences, we actually then bring in very, very new people not many of them don't have college degrees, come from very low impact backgrounds. About 80% come from something called a social impact background, which, which means that whether it's in India and we have a center in the US, it's below poverty level. So that's what we do. We have a large number of big clients, some number of smaller clients as well. Five, less than 5% attrition. So if you train the workforce and work with us on it, chances are they will be there when you're going to do your next inter iteration after the machine learning to increase the predictability and performance. And the last thing, uh, this is a picture of one of our workers. We call this human empowered computing. There's the human side and the computer side and making them work together the best is the best way we can get AI out into production and into all of the businesses. So thank you.